What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London and another video down at Southern Sky Motors. They've invited me down to pick any car that I want to drive from their stock today. And I have picked this car. Behind me is a Sepang Blue Audi R8 V10 R-Tronic 2010. And this car, the reason that I'm making this video is probably because of the title, if I've titled it the way that I'm thinking in my head. But all of my friends discuss if you had £70,000 and you needed to buy one car that you had to daily but at the same time you could have a lot of fun in, what car would you be? I've also got a BMW M4 behind me so maybe that is your choice and I'll be looking to see some of the comments in the comment box below of what car you would pick. However today I have always loved this car. I've never driven it, but it is a combination of my Audi R8 V8 and also a Lamborghini Gallardo. So what could be better than an Audi R8 V10? And this car is for sale at Sun Sky Motors for £67,000. So it is within budget and has got an epic spec. It doesn't have the carbon side blades, but that's not a problem. It has so much carbon inside. It's got carbon ceramic brakes and every single thing. Satnav, Bang & Olufsen, Magna Ride, and it has got a whole host of other options including parking sensors, rear reversing camera and um, other things but I just want to get inside this car oh it's got sports seats as well, it's got sports bucket seats which are pretty rare on the R8 V10 so let's jump in, go for a drive with Grant who is going to be my cameraman because this camera is too heavy to stick up on the windscreen so let's go So here we go, back in <laughs> such a familiar place. But this is Artronic and has a V10. So, oh, uh, uh, yeah, our Artronic and has a V10. And we've got the race seats, a lot of carbon fiber, but it is so nice to be back driving an R8. And the reason why I picked this car and this video was one, because I wanted to get behind the wheel of an R8 again and just see how different it is to my R8 as a V8, but also how different or similar it is to the Lamborghini, um, which is currently for sale as I make the video of why I'm selling the Lamborghini. So let's go. for a drive in the R-Tronic Audi R8 V10. And I have to say, this is a beautiful spec. So much carbon inside. We've got the race seats that are very, very hugging. We also got the, we do have the suspension, which I can tick. And then it becomes a lot more softer and more of a cruiser. This has actually got a mega spec. Very, very quiet, just like the R8 V8. feels like home. <laughs> this is so bizarre. I've literally just arrived at Southern Sky Motors and jumped into an RA which is so familiar for me, having spent pretty much every day for 18 months inside one. I'm really intrigued to put the R-Tronic gearbox to the test and also the 5 litre V10 behind. It's got a lot more power than the V8 and Grant's also um, warned me that this has got carbon ceramic brakes as well which is a, a massive optional extra on a car this this sort of age I suppose you can hear the V10 whirring up which is a Lamborghini engine so this car is a complete merge of my R8 V8 and the Lamborghini LP560 and I have to say it is good to be back in an R8 it just feels wicked. The steering wheel, however, is so different to the Lamborghini. It's exactly the same shape with the flat bottom steering wheel, but it's so much more thin up at the top. And I comment quite a lot on the Lamborghini and even on the AMG GTS that the steering wheel is a lot more chunkier, which I think I prefer. So once we get onto some open road, I'm gonna stick it into manual mode, use the paddles that I've got here behind the steering wheel, stick it in sport mode as well, and hopefully the exhaust valves will open up and we can have some fun. Get down the gears. Whoa. 
<laughs> it does pick up a lot quicker than my R8. Just jumping in this car and having this image in front of me just throws me back a couple of years to when I had the R8 and how familiar it is. I was just telling Grant off camera who today is my cameraman that it is so familiar yet just putting my foot down there for the first time a completely different experience this is a completely different car now the one thing that I love about the Audi R8 package right from the first R8s is that they are almost faultless, they are so clinical, with the Audi badge on the front and the Audi German engineering, with a bit of Lamborghini flair, this car, the Mark I, the first generation R8, is still loved by so many people. And comment below if you still love the old R8 over the new look that they've literally just announced, just launched, sorry, um, and you start seeing them on the road. I personally think that it is a development, the new one is a development, and obviously it is crazy power and crazy performance, 602 brake horsepower, as quick as a Lamborghini Huracan, and not far off a Bugatti Veyron off the line. In a car that costs 150 grand, it is insane. However, as some of you may be following my journey of what I'm gonna be doing to replace the Lamborghini, the R8 V10 Plus was, slash is, still a consideration and they are dropping so dramatically from 145 grand to 125 grand so the depreciation always scares me on brand new r8s but this is what it is all about this is why it is so attractive to buy essentially one of the greatest supercars of its time an everyday supercar for 66, 67, under 70,000 pounds. And it goes back to the conversation that I was having with, or always have with my friends of, if you had 75 grand to spend on a, on a car that you had to daily, but also had to have a lot of fun in, every single time I'd pick an RA V10. And I never drove one, I never actually drove this particular version of the car. I drove the facelifted V10 with the S-Tronic gearbox, but, I never drove on with an R-Tronic, and yes, it's a single clutch gearbox, so if anyone's used to a double clutch gearbox, they might feel that it's a little bit dated, but honestly, if you're on these country roads and you're banging it through the gears, it's just as entertaining, if not more entertaining, to have the sort of dramatic pantomime as the single clutch gearbox is, and carbon ceramic brakes really make a difference when you're braking. I can imagine they are awesome on a track, and here we go. It revved. <laughs> oh man, naturally aspirated engine, so freely revving, torque is incredible, the sound, even though it's kind of muted on the R8 compared to the Lamborghini, I feel Audi have dumbed down the sound, I've also sort of slightly detuned the engine on this car compared to the Lamborghini but it still sounds phenomenal and as soon as you put an aftermarket exhaust system on this car you can really make it sound exactly the same as a Lamborghini. I will stress that the Lamborghini that I'm referring to is a Mark I Lamborghini Gallardo. I'm not referring to the LP560 which had a revised 5.2 litre engine, slightly better gearbox and is an all round much better car as you would imagine it's double the price to this what car would you buy for 70 grand i remember flicking through the auto trader magazine looking at ferrari 360s back in the day and what spec i could get for 70 grand and now the way ferraris are going if you've watched sam seen through glasses video about ferrari they're all just going up and the crazy thing with this car is because it is the first audi r8 with the old shape which is kind of preferred by the majority these are holding their value very, very well, if not slightly creeping up in value. So if you buy at the right price and be careful with the mileage that you do, there's no reason why you couldn't get six to nine months free or incredibly cheap motoring. So this is a very, very, very good buy if you want a wicked car that you can have fun in any weather in the UK. I feel like I'm doing a sales pitch now for Sun Sky Motors for this car, but I'm, I'm telling the truth, I'm telling my opinion, but also like this car 
is so good I'm just going to put it back into auto now and cruise take out sport take the Magna ride off suspension sport mode off but as an everyday car yes some people might need the practicality of four seats or a slightly bigger boot this car's got enough space if you want to go on a bit of a road trip this car is seriously seriously wicked and the v10 side blades actually looking in the rear view uh, in the wing mirrors now so much more aggressive than the v8 so much more aggressive and you get the big shoulders at the back of the car this car was designed perfectly by audi which is why they are struggling to win over the public on the new one i still think i prefer the new one i just think it's slightly more futuristic looks a bit more aggressive and on the road they look incredible and they sound absolutely phenomenal but there's no reason why you can't make this car with an aftermarket exhaust sound just as good so with that being said i think it's time to head back to southern sky motors what a wicked car i'm so glad that i've got behind the wheel of an R8 again. It's brought back so many amazing memories of the car, but combining the R8 and the Lamborghini together, it is arguably, arguably the perfect package. Well that was a lot of fun, epic drive and so good to be behind the wheel of an Audi R8. The V10 model with carbon ceramic brakes and an Artronic gearbox. And I'm out of breath as you would have seen, I actually had to run pretty much the length of this road to get those shots of it pulling into uh, Southern Sky Motors. So thank you for watching. Please give it a thumbs up and comment below, what would you spend 70,000 pounds on if you needed to buy one car that you had to have fun in, but at the same time you had to daily as well. My choice would be that car behind. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you very soon for more Supercars of London. Whew.